Yeah, thanks so much, Elise. It was great to speak to you. It was good to talk. <laughs> Don't use that. Can we redo that? <laughs> it's good to talk. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Meet the Makers, a video series where I put questions to creators from around the world about their videography and photography businesses, mainly in the wedding industry. But first, I want to share with you a short video about a workshop for videographers and photographers that I have coming up later in the year. If you'd like to learn more about the workshop, there's more information in the description below. Today, I'm going to be talking to Elise Standen from Films in Bloom, a UK-based wedding videographer. Elise shoots at a lot of exclusive and high-end wedding venues in the UK and in Europe, and creates films full of stylish flourishes, which I'll be asking her about. So let's jump straight in with question one. Well, thanks so much for joining me today, Elise. And I'm going to go straight in with the first question, which is, how did you get into videography in the first place? Um, so I started in TV originally, so came out of university um, went and worked for a commercials production company, um, Mustard um, TV, and then moved over um, pretty quickly to Cactus TV and working on the Richard and Judy show then moved across to Saturday Kitchen and made um, various documentaries and um, stuff for ITV, the Crime Thriller Awards and stuff like that. You know, I ended up working across quite a few different sorts of genres of TV, um, different types of production. So just earn, uh, sorry, learn loads um, and got loads of different experience in different areas. So I worked for a celebrity booking team for a while. Then I worked um, in the teams who put together the actual kind of um, uh, the shows each day for Richard and Judy so I worked on the Friday show for a while um, then I worked as part of the production team for Saturday Kitchen so it was just brilliant to kind of um, build up all of those different skill set and to work in so many different departments. Did you get to do any of the sort of practical side of it were you ever involved in I don't know were you ever like in the editing rooms or anything like that or was it? Yeah so um, I was very much sort of um organizing so I'd go out so for example on the Rich and Judy summer read um, I was putting together so booking the celebrities to go out to different countries where we'd film them discussing the books and that sort of thing so I was very much kind of organizing pulling stuff together um, and then towards the end I was doing a lot more edit producing so we did the crime thriller awards for ITV and I edit produced um, all of the little kind of VTs that played for that um, so that was really interesting but in terms of camera work um, so whenever I kind of went out on shoots and was helping to produce shoots I'd always have um, a team so with um, a cameraman a sound recordist um, so I never I was never hands-on it was too big a production company um, to be that hands-on um, with 
that side of stuff that they had very defined roles for everybody whereas I know in smaller production companies you can you can kind of take the cameras out and do a bit of everything on that front but it was different at Cactus. <laughs> At what point did you move over to weddings then? You know, how did that come about? Um, so I was pregnant. I just moved because I was really keen to kind of work in documentaries and Cactus TV were making a number of documentaries. So I asked if I could move off of Saturday Kitchen um, and into um, documentary production. They were making um, a group of, I think it was about six documentaries about various crime thriller authors. So Ruth Rendell, who was alive at the time, um, we made a documentary with her, Ian Rankin and a few others, Colin Dexter. Um, and so um, I was kind of working on those. I just moved out of Saturday kitchen was working on those and then um, was really pregnant with my son um, and then I kind of realized that I just wouldn't watch him grow up if I carried on working in TV um, leaving the house first thing in the morning getting back last thing at night so um, then had a hiatus kind of just you know sort of spent some time with him um, and then really needed to work again and and then at that point was just like, how on earth am I going to kind of bring my skill set, um, still be able to use that, utilize that, you know, kind of earn money from that because I absolutely love, you know, kind of making TV, making film. Um, and then realized that perhaps one way to do it would be to kind of make wedding films and other types of films. Um, and at that point, there was a real explosion in kind of, you know, up until that point, so this was some time ago, this was kind of maybe 10, between 10 and 12 years ago, up until that point, um, wedding films were a bit sort of 80s, you know, and then suddenly they were beginning to evolve into the kind of cinematic extravaganzas that we see today. So it felt a lot more exciting and a lot more something that I'd want to be involved with really, and something you could creatively get a lot out of. Okay. And, and how did your first wedding come about? Was it was it just a, a friend or something? Or uh, So at that point, I'd worked in TV for years, but I'd never operated cameras or anything else. So I knew that I had everything to learn um, and um, that I would need to do whatever I was doing would need to be for free. So I found someone on the internet um, that was getting married, um, didn't have any budget for video um, and um, kind of got in contact with her and said, I have no experience kind of filming weddings. Um, so I can do it for free, but have no expectations. <laughs> so you were just making like a little, like a little highlight film. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I was so nervous um, and she was really pleased with it. And, you know, it all started from there. And then I just started kind of slowly building up what I charged um, when I felt like I could justify that with the experience that I was offering. So, I mean, did you use that film to sort of springboard to get others? Did you build a website and things or was it more of a slow... I kind of built it up slowly because, um, you know, sort of, um, I, I needed to build up my confidence as much as I needed to build up my experience, if that makes sense. So over the course of a year, I just slowly kind of built it up in increments. I got a website up and running. Um, and then I just kind of, I charged very little for the second wedding. And then from that, maybe up to 500. And then from that up to, you know, a grand and just gradually kind of built it up. Um, and then by the kind of second season then, you know, I was, I felt like, uh, you know, I had enough experience and I could offer enough quality to kind of start charging good rates really. How did you settle on the sort of style of filmmaking that you wanted to do? Um, and how would you describe that style now? So I think that took, it took me ages to kind of find my feet with my style. And I think, um, I was quite indecisive about it at the beginning and I couldn't see the wood for the trees. So um, in the industry, there's kind of um, lots of people aren't there on all of the Facebook groups talking about different styles and what you should and shouldn't do in terms of style and that sort of thing. And I think I was quite swayed by that for a while. I was just sort of what felt like intuitively felt like sh should be my style. I sort of started to question whether, you know, I should be doing it that way. For ages, I didn't really have the confidence 
not to do that. I was just sort of being blown in the wind by whatever style was in vogue at that point in time. So when I first started out, it was that whole really kind of vintage, washed out vibe going on. And I really kind of went into that. And um, and then I think sort of over maybe about the last sort of three or four years, I feel like I've found my feet more and maybe got the confidence to kind of stick perhaps slightly more to what feels comfortable for me. Um, not saying in any way, shape or form that I've got, you know, some sort of original style because I don't, because I think we're all kind of, um, we're all emulating. No, no one's inventing the wheel here, are we? Um, but I think in terms of what my style is, um, I kind of think I've, I keep my colors I think having throughout the years kind of you know seen lots of styles come and go and lots of color grays come and go I think do you know what what works for me and what most importantly seems to work for my couples and what they connect with is quite a saturated colorful vibrant style I absolutely love that kind of very very classy you know sort of um low exposure style um absolutely love that but it doesn't it doesn't seem to resonate with my particular kind of couples. So I, so I keep my color grade pretty consistent. And then the other kind of thing I think that I kind of play a lot with in my style is I'm sort of a bit obsessed with pace, tempo and energy. So, and the interplay of the music with the visuals. Um, so again, everyone does it differently. And I hugely appreciate kind of um, films, you know, and filmmakers that, don't do that so much. Um, but I kind of found that for my type of couple, I have a lot of couples that um, get married in quite grand places or they're, they're having quite grand weddings um, and they seem to kind of like the drama, you know, of me sort of, I do a lot of building pace and lots of builds with music and with different sort of um, sometimes transitional devices or, you know, various kind of editing devices or filming devices. For example, I filmed a wedding in Budapest um, and the night before the actual wedding itself, there was um, a drinks party on the Savoy Terrace, which overlooks the whole of Budapest. Um, and then there was a lightning storm and this couple are getting, you know, they're having a drinks uh, reception on the Savoy Terrace. The next day they're um, getting married in a castle. Then they're going on to um, the Corinthia Ballroom. So, and I've already spoken to them and she works for the BBC and she really wanted me to kind of go to town on the edit and to go to town on the sort of epicness of the whole thing. Um, so, um, so there's a lightning storm on the terrace the night before, and I knew that that would kind of be the beginning. So I'm already beginning to visualize film. I know that's the, gonna be the beginning of this film, and it's gonna be very dramatic. So then the next day I go to film bridal prep um, and groom's prep, and that's in kind of quite, normal hotel rooms with fluorescent lighting and we had a very short amount of time with them and there's not a tremendous amount going on so at that point I'm thinking okay well this is where I'm going to employ qu quite a lot of sort of extra stuff in the edit to make sense of the drama of these kind of lightning strikes and you know this stuff going on which I know is going to be directly before in the edit and then to kind of link it into the next part of the film and to kind of create that build basically and that interplay with the music as well. Um, so, so then I kind of step outside of the naturalism of that shoot and think, okay, I've got enough there for them to see in their longer film so that they can Sit, look back at what kind of happened that morning but now I need something for this cinematic trailer so then I start to film and so I'm planning all the time okay so then I start to film the groomsmen the shadows going across the door because I know I'll set that in time for the beast the music and I know that I've taken big dramatic shadows going across statues the night before so then I start to kind of run a theme and then I know I'm going to transition from those shadows into other segments directly after that so so I'm planning already on a dreamlike sequence that I know isn't going to be you know, a, a, a natural sort of um, sequence. I'm very much dramatizing everything here and kind of creating a different type of story. So, so that's all very planned.
take with you to a wedding. Yeah. So movement is pretty key um, to my films and just as with the kind of transitional stuff or anything that I do in the edit, I don't do it gratuitously. So there'll always be a reason for it. And I think kind of it's really important to do that. And I think drone, you know, has, uh, you know, kind of drone shots, all of these different things have their place as long as, as long as you've got a reason for using it. Um, and you're not just kind of, you know, chuck, chucking it in there. So, um, so movement plays a big part in my film. So I do have um, a gimbal. Um, but again, I definitely don't use it all day. I'll use it at kind of certain points. Quite often I might use that in the evening again to kind of help build that energy and pace. Um, I try not to limit myself. I try to have just have a play on the day and really explore. And as long as I've got all of the things that I know are really important to the couple, because, at, you know, first and foremost, it's their needs are what matters obviously but as long as I know that I've ticked all of that box all of those boxes then I'll go and just kind of take whatever equipment I've got whether I'm doing it handheld or whether I'm you know doing it on a gimbal and I'll just go and have a play and just try different creative stuff and you know try and um you know kind of utilize that time that maybe isn't as interesting to go and get you know, some, some stuff that I can use later in the edit. What about software? What software do you use to edit at home? And do you use any other bits of software to go with that? Any sort of coloring sort of add-ons or anything? Yeah, um, so I use Final Cut Pro and Film Convert. Um, um, I have loads of kind of different plugins of, um, I, you know, always very, very careful with, I mean, my, the films that I deliver are very edit intensive. Um, so I'm doing a lot of my work for my films in the edit. Um, so I've got, loads of different plugins that I use. Having said that, any sort of, you know, kind of transitions or stuff that I'm kind of doing, I try and create on the day or do it in a super subtle way through. There's nothing worse than, what are those radial, you know, all of those kind of... Oh yeah, like wipes and things like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing worse than that. But I do have some really amazing subtle transition um, kind of plugins that just help push things along if I need it. But if you can see that that is generated in the computer, then it doesn't, most of the time, it just will not go in the film. Okay, well, what would you say is your favourite part of your job now? You know, what do you think you've settled on as the thing you're most excited about? Is it the filming and the editing or the just meeting people on the day? The most fun that I sort of get out of it and what a lot of my couples kind of book me for and seem to enjoy, otherwise it wouldn't be worth doing it, but it's just to try and create things in the edit that are interesting, most obviously first and foremost the couple, but also to me and that to help to kind of enhance and push that story along. Um, so playing around with those devices, seeing how I can put clips together, um, it, you know, in a way that kind of creates some sort of wonderful flow an interesting flow is kind of key to me um, and layering images. I think kind of for me, that's an art form in itself. At what point do you bring music in? You know, how important is the music to you? Does that come later on or is that quite an early part of the edit? Uh, music is is as key to me, really, and to my films probably, you know, kind of as <laughs> visuals in many ways. Um, they're just such an intrinsic part of, of the journey of my films. Um, so... You know, that that's what I pick. You know, I, I've, I will have filmed the wedding and I will have a really good understanding of the vibe of that wedding and the kind of film that the couple are looking for um, and what the kind of parts of that wedding that I really want to pull out in the film and that I know the couple will want me to pull out. So I'll kind of pick the music based on that and what I think the journey of the film will be. So, for example, my Budapest film, you know, kind of, I think 
the music is kind of for me part of what makes that film for me and and I know it was for the couple um and then every part of my editing of that film is just intertwined interwoven with that music and I'll cut the music a lot as well to kind of to help me to fit the pace of the voiceover um and what's what's happening within the film but that's absolutely kind of vital and where do you get your music out of interest where do you go for music um I look all over and I can sometimes spend a couple of days looking for music you know it has to be just right um and but music bed consistently I've tried all of them um, but Music Bed seems to be the one where I kind of end up finding most of my tracks. Every now and then it might be somewhere else. Is it Artlist, um, you know, and, and other ones? You know, there's lots of really great ones, but it, I don't think anything for me beats Music Bed. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is the biggest mistake you've ever made on a job? It can either be something that happened on the day, or I don't know, something in the edit, or maybe just something early on that you wish you'd done better with pricing or something. In terms of, do you know, my biggest mistakes have been where I haven't, or I haven't wanted to listen to my clients' needs or kind of wants. And so I was, I filmed, for example, this amazing Coptic Orthodox wedding at the Royal Exchange and I filmed quite a few um, within that community um, and I know that they love very romanticized films um, and very epic films um, and I know exactly the kind of style that they're looking for and I shot this particular film and I was like that's great that that will be part of my portfolio and that'll go on the website so Normally, I'd let the couple play more of a part, perhaps, in choosing their music. Um, and and I kind of picked their track for them. And I picked it according to being a little bit sort of edgy with the edit, you know. So I was kind of pushing myself creatively um, in terms of the edit. And I picked this track accordingly to be able to do some interesting stuff in the edit, because obviously the more sort of interesting the song, the more you can kind of em employ that within the edit to kind of, to do some more interesting edits. And, and I sent it to them and they were just like, what is this? <laughs> What's this morbid, depressing, <laughs> slightly like bizarre song that you picked for us? <laughs> And so I was just like, J fair play. And so I said, can I use this? I'm so sorry about that. Can I use this for my website? I will re-edit this, goes without saying, free of charge. Um, to, a, to, you know, you pick your track and, and they pick something a lot more sort of traditional and romantic and happy. I, th I think what we can, I think what we can be guilty of as filmmakers is sometimes we can sort of forget what the client wants and, and, it becomes an expression of ourselves creatively and artistically and that maybe we kind of lose sight perhaps a little bit of the client's needs and become a bit too focused on our own artistic needs or, or you know sort of or what we think makes a good edit or is interesting and that that experience really kind of reconnected me back to okay what what am I really doing this for you know I'm employed by them and I'm doing this for them and that has to take precedence and anything else after that is kind of a bonus. What would you say has most influenced your work? You know, what is it you look at to get inspired? Is it films or is it music or is it TV shows or is it something in the wedding industry? What is it you think you, you mainly look at to get influenced. Wedding films is quite a distinct genre that I think is kind of made up of a bit part film, part documentary, part music video. So do you know what? I kind of look at all of those things. So when I watch documentaries, when I, you know, kind of watch obviously film, I look at photographs, photographs that kind of of, of photographers that inspire me. I look at wedding stuff. I look at non-wedding stuff. Um, just anything that kind of I have an emotional connection to. And that because I just think wedding film 
is made up of so many different components. It's even to some extent part commercial marketing film. Do you know what I mean? Because you're selling this kind of, you're enhancing something and also you're creating kind of a story and you're doing it to some extent to a brief because I have long chats with my couples beforehand to, to kind of really find out what it is that they want to get from their film and what they're looking for and the parts of the day that are really important to them and that they want to pull out and they're not always the obvious ones, you know. Um, so I, I, I do think there's so many devices that we're employing and so many influences. We're going into the new wedding season soon. What would you say is the main thing you want to improve upon in your work this season? Uh, definitely my colour grading, I think. Um, I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. And, co and colour grading's definitely sort of um, probably the part of my filmmaking that I need to folk, you know, kind of really sort of focus on next. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the area. So what is your current workflow? Is it, do you, you mentioned about having a a look in camera so do, do you do a lot of your color in camera you don't shoot live no, so it's like been a lot in camera um and then what i'm finding is i don't think i will ever you know kind of move entirely away from that um just because i don't think i'm good enough at color grading i think kind of my time is probably better spent for my films and my type of client elsewhere um but I also think that I need to allow myself, I need to kind of find the sweet spot between <laughs> relying too much in camera and then getting to the edit and being like, what the hell am I going to do with this now? You know, so, um, so I, I want to retain that kind of vibrant, fairly saturated kind of color look. You know, I don't want to kind of totally change that. But there's definitely tweaks that I need to go in and do um, with skin tones. I want to kind of... Um, really sort of finesse and and work on all of that so and I always have my thing that I next want to improve and so over lockdown I've been working on that. Final question is what would you say is your top tip for someone who's getting into videography now you know something from your years of experience what would you say is the main thing they should think about focus on? I think be inspired. So go and obviously kind of be inspired by the filmmakers because that, you know, I, I still very much am. Um, but I think just to kind of have that confidence to really sort of find out what it is, the way that you want to film, what your couples, what connects with your couples, um, where you sit stylistically. Um, and to kind of have the confidence to do that and not worry too much about what everyone else is up to. And obviously, like I said before, none of us are reinventing the wheel. We're all going to be emulating. We're all going to be stylistically, you know, um, similar to, you know, kind of lots of other people in our industry. So um, you obviously, you know, kind of I'm not saying go out and find some sort of unique filming style that no one else has got because that's impossible. Um, but I think it's to kind of shut out the noise a bit as well. And if you're like, you know what, this kind of feels right for me filming this way. This is, this feels authentic. Um, this is what I enjoy doing. This most importantly, this is you know, my couples are kind of booking me for this and they really like this style, then I think, you know, just have the confidence to, you know, kind of do that style and to keep building upon that style, even if other people are saying that perhaps that's not, you know, kind of the right way or the in way, because I think we have a lot of trends in our industry, don't we? And it's tried to not get too swayed kind of I've watched in this industry I've watched you know lots of trends come and go and then when you're in that trend it's almost like it's unthinkable that anyone would film <laughs> <laughs> you know kind of any other way and then suddenly as quickly as that trend comes then the next uh, the next one does and I kind of think take parts of you know if you really love that look take parts of it um but don't don't you know kind of um become a replica of 
of someone else's style because you'll only ever be a poor imitation. And I think that's something you've done incredibly well is, you know, I know if I see one of your films, I recognize it as yours. And now I've, I'm beginning to kind of see sort of, you know, kind of, I love watching your films and I feel like, oh, you know, I, I, I kind of recognize that. And you're sort of, and also you'll progress, I, you know, kind of progress different things into your work and, and add different elements and try out stuff. And I just kind of think that everyone should do that and and have the confidence to do it even if you know you don't see many other people doing that or even if it's the opposite my saturated you know kind of um, color that I use in a lot of my films is kind of um, the opposite of what's in fashion at the moment but I kind of stick with it because it works for me yeah it's one of those things and also we all notice that much more than maybe clients do they don't know there's this way of doing it or whatever they might have only looked at three or four videographers before they find your work or whatever so I think this idea that yeah there's this cohesive thing everyone should be doing just doesn't really make sense to me the whole point of running your business is you want to carve out your little bit of it don't you see so, you, know, find your own you path. definitely want to stick to what has been working for you up till now yeah completely agree all right well thanks for that that's 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 some really useful stuff if people want to find your your work or just contact you where are the best places to look for you um so website is filmsinbloom.co.uk um films in bloom on instagram and then there's unearthed which i'm part of obviously which you know kind of we haven't discussed but that's more for commercial work um with leanne perrins and francis Medell, and that is um unearthstudios.com and unearthed studio on instagram thanks so much to elise for coming on and being really honest about the industry and giving some really great tips to newcomers you can find links to her website and Instagram, as well as information about my upcoming workshop in the description below. See you in the next episode.